I'm Lenny, and in this video, I'm going to discuss Season 1, Episode 14 of The Twilight Zone, titled Third from the Sun. The original air date for this episode was January 8th, 1960. The episode begins with us looking at a factory, or at a plant, and it's 5.30, so it's quitting time. The people that are working at the factory are going home. This is where we're introduced to William Sturka, also known as Bill Sturka. He's approached by this guy, pimped out in an all-white suit, white hat, and glasses. Carlene starts a conversation with Bill, saying that it probably won't be long now that Bill's part of the factory has ramped up its work, ramped up its production, probably about another 48 hours before the events start. Wish, Up over, blammo, there goes the enemy, which makes it sound like a nuclear attack or a missile attack and Carlin seems very very excited about this. Bill does not seem excited. Bill seems very tense. His rebuttal to Carlin's statement is what if the enemy also goes wish up over and blammo there goes us too and Carlin doesn't think that that's going to happen. He thinks with the first strike, it's going to take care of the enemy and it's going to scare them. And he, he has a very smug confidence about the situation. As Bill gets home from work to his house, it's a beautiful summer evening. Bill lives in the suburbs in a very nice home. When Bill gets into the house, he is greeted by his daughter, Jody. He doesn't want her to see his worry. So he tries to joke around with her and act like everything is normal. Bill's wife, named Eve, can tell that something is up though, that something is wrong. So her and Bill go into their bedroom and they have a talk. And Bill notifies Eve that it's only gonna be another 48 hours before everybody is wiped out. And they have a plan. Their plan is to escape tonight and they are going to sneak away on a ship. Bill also notifies Eve that Jerry and his wife are going to be coming over underneath the guise that they're going to be playing card games. And Jerry is actually going to be the pilot of the ship who's been working with connections to get them into a secret area that they will have to sneak into later on tonight. He's actually bribed a guard. We are introduced to Jerry who actually comes over to speak to Bill. And they are going to talk in the, the foyer are in the hallway by the front door. But they look around and they're kind of talking in code, almost as if the house is bugged. So they go downstairs to the basement. Bill tells Jerry not to talk as of yet. He's going to turn on a loud machine to muffle their conversation. We find out during this talk, a little exposition, that Jerry has been working on his plan for at least three months now but things have changed. The guard that he has bribed has a different shift. So the time that they were gonna leave no longer is going to work. They have to adapt their plan. The two have talked and they have come to the conclusion to move the plans up sooner. Jerry is gonna go home, get his wife and bring her over. The two leave the basement and we see outside of the basement window hovering and creeping around, all decked out still in his all white suit is Mr. Carling. A little bit later on that evening, we see Bill, his wife Eve, Jody, and Jerry and his wife Anne. They're sitting around playing cards. This is where Bill fills in Jody about what is going to be taking place. They need to leave very soon because there is going to be a war. Jerry pulls from his pocket a piece of paper. It has coordinates on it and the direction and route that they need to take and they're going over this information. This is where a visitor comes to Bill's house and is at the door. And who could it be? Mr. Carling again, who just happens to be walking around the neighborhood. He says he likes to go for walks on hot summer nights. It helps him get rest. It helps him sleep. And my man is wearing a full suit. Carling is standing right aside or right behind Bill and Jerry. And Jerry still has the piece of paper out that has the coordinates and their escape route on it. Jerry very quickly turns the piece of paper over and starts scribbling scores from the card games that they were supposedly playing on the other side. This is actually a very cool scene, the way that it's shot, because we can see from underneath a glass table, we see the paper 
with the coordinates and we can actually look up through the table and we'd see Bill, we see Carling, and we see Jerry. And Carling picks up the paper. Now if he was to turn it over, everything would fall apart because the plans are on the opposite side of the paper. Luckily he does not though. And after some very tense interaction and taking one sip of the lemonade that the ladies get him, he leaves. Bill goes to walk him outside. While they're looking up at the night sky and at the stars, Carling asks Bill if he's ever thought if there's other people that live on those faraway stars, if they're similar to how we are, and if it's better, if it's a better place on those other stars than where we are right now. Bill answers honestly and he says yes. And Carling looks at him and he's like, I bet you have. You can definitely tell that Carling knows something. He is very suspicious and he leaves for the evening. After he leaves, that is when Bill decides that they are going to have to leave now. They have to head on out and they have to get going. So they are all going to drive within one car and they are gonna head to the security base, secret part of the plant, and they are gonna get on this ship. The whole group arrives at gate 6A, which is where Jerry's contact is supposed to be, the guy that he bribed to be able to get them on the ship. You can see somebody using their flashlight as a signal. Jerry has the headlights of the car flashed in response to the signal, and his source is walking forward. As the gentleman comes closer, we find out that this actually isn't Jerry's contact. It's Carling, still wearing his whole white suit, white hat, and he has a gun, and he is on to their plans of escape. With the gun in hand, he asks Jerry and Bill to get into the car, and he's going to have the ladies step outside because he's going to take the car and take them to the authorities, to the military. Bill's daughter, Jody is closest to the door, and she uses the door to slam into Carling, who drops the gun and Bill and Jerry get the drop on him and actually knock him out. So they all hop into the car, drive through the gate, and then run on foot to get to the ship that's waiting. After a couple failed attempts by security to stop them, they are able to get into the ship and close the hatch. The ship that they get into is a spaceship and it's your typical old school science fiction sci-fi round flying saucer. As our group is traveling safely within the spaceship, we get an interior shot and we see them sitting around and they discuss the coordinates of where they are going. They are heading to the brightest star that has people just like them on this planet and it is the third planet from the sun. They are headed to a place called Earth. The revelation within this episode is the whole time that you're watching it and they're talking about war, especially nuclear war, and going to a place where there's people similar to them, you already assume that they are on Earth. But that's the fun of the Twilight Zone, especially if it's the first time that you've ever seen an episode. You never know what the twist is going to be. Rating Third Planet from the Sun on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the best, I give it an 8. We have now come to the interactive part of this video. If you think the video is worthy of a thumbs up, please feel free to do so. And if you enjoyed the video and you want to see others like it, all you have to do is hit the YouTube logo, which is going to be down in the corner, and you'll get a notification anytime a new video is uploaded to the channel. As always, I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for your time, and thank you for the opportunity to talk about these things that I'm passionate about. Greatly appreciate that. Please be safe, be careful, and I'll talk to you soon.